There's a rainbow in the sky over there first thing in the morning. I don't know if I've ever seen a rainbow first thing in the morning before. It's morning time, why are you so happy? Rainbow. It's a super stop. Super stop. This is a uh, Petrol Canada in Yorkton. This is where I slept last night or this night. I now have fuel cards for Petrol Canada, so I can actually fuel at Petrol Canada's now, which opens up a whole new list of opportunity for fueling for me. It's gonna be strange fueling at a Petrol Canada. I can still fuel at Huskies and Flying Jays, but. I have another option now. If Petro Canada has a better price, you in my business. That's how it works. Oh, the rainbow's gone. Huh. Guess I scared it away. Diesel. I just brushed my teeth. I feel good. I feel clean. <sighs> feeling after you brush your teeth. Oh, I'm trying to make a commitment to brush my teeth more often. It's so often, especially when you're up here in Western Canada, that you don't find a nice washroom with plumbing where you can brush your teeth. So I gotta get creative sometimes on how I brush my teeth on the road. Usually I just look for a washroom and do it in there. But I know I've seen other be people who have like ways of brushing their teeth in their truck. I haven't found a way of doing that yet without leaving my toothbrush completely icky and yucky. I don't know. But top of the morning to you. Have I said that yet? Top of the morning to you. Oh. So yeah, like I was telling you in the last clip, this is Petro Canada. This is a truck stop. Big truck stop in Yorkton. There's trucks here, trucks there. Trucks over there, trucks over there. Trucks over there. So, you know, it's a Canadian truck stop. You just, just park wherever. Just shut her down. As long as you're off the road and safe. Who cares if anyone else can't get out? Who cares? It's Canada, man. It's my pet peeve when people don't park straight. But then again, I don't park straight every time. So maybe it's just like a one-time thing for all of them at once. I don't know. Maybe it's a one-time thing every day for them. <laughs> one time every day you park completely crooked and go to sleep. <laughs> it's not like it is in the States where they have paved parking lots and nice little lines. They don't do that here because people wouldn't care. They'd park however they wanted anyways. <laughs> uh, the Flying Jays and a lot of the Huskies, a lot of truck stops have paved parking up here. I make it sound a lot crazier than it is. I just exaggerate because I think it's funny. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes when there's lines painted, guys don't care anyways. They just park wherever. You park this way, you park that way. Lines, what are they for? It must be for the sidewalk for walking. I don't know. Anyways, Diesel, let's wake ourselves up. We gotta go deliver to our first customer, which is pretty much literally that way. It's just a couple of blocks over that way. It's in New Yorkton. Let's go get her done, and then we're headed to Nanton. I still don't know where that is. <laughs> Nanton, Alberta. That's awesome. Get out of the way, pickup truck. Hey. Not very nice. Ruins my shot. So there's his two pilot vehicles there. They're leaving Yorkton with a house. You know, when I moved, I just bought a new house, but hey, I didn't know it was an option just to take my house with me. Look at that thing. That is awesome. Somebody bought a house. Congratulations. It's on the way being shipped as we speak. Are they blocking traffic over there or what? Nice, I'm so glad I'm not going that way. Cool. Where did the pilot vehicles go? Oh, there's one behind them. Look at that. Wide load, yeah, you think? You have a house on there, man. <laughs> See you later. 
Have a good day. Have a good trip, man. Just once, just once, I want to pull a house. Just once. Look at that, look at it. Look at it go down the highway. <laughs> I just think it looks hilarious. I don't know why. Excuse me, but pardon me, coming through. Excuse me, got a house here. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, my hands are shaky. I'm sorry. It's still morning time. Oh, those poor people all stuck behind them. Look at the cars. They're like, what in the world? Hey, trying to go to work here. For many tourists, they're taking pictures. Two soldiers on ceremonial guard at the war memorial. Um, a gunman uh, got out of a car, it's believed, and walked sort of briskly but methodically towards one of the soldiers. And with a long gun, it's believed to be a shotgun at this point, uh, fired at least one shot. Um, it sounds like into the chest of the uh, soldier. And, and then just moments ago, we were, we were able to confirm that that soldier now has uh, has died. Um, from there, the gunman um, ran. Uh, it would be about 200 yards to Parliament Hill entered uh, Parliament Hill. There was a, an armed standoff with several security personnel on Parliament Hill. And from what we understand, the Sergeant at Arms, who's in charge of security on Parliament Hill, um, uh, fired and, and killed the gunman um, on Parliament Hill. Um, and, and then, uh, well, from there, uh, it sounds like there is a, a separate, well, there is a separate gunman, but it's not confirmed where he is at this point. Today is the day when Parliament Hill was attacked by gunmen. I know this is a week ago for you, but this will be in remembrance of that, I guess, of the lives that were lost. Uh, for me right now, it's happening as I speak and as I drive here. There was an attack on the Canadian, uh, we'll say in quotation marks, White House. We call it Parliament Hill. From what I heard, the Prime Minister was evacuated safely and he is safe. However, there was a targeted attack, attack on specific military soldiers. I don't know if they were specific, but they were targeted on them at that point, on uh, the National Memorial Hill, or at the National Memorial War Memorial. Uh, a masked gunman got out of a car, walked towards him like you heard with a shotgun, shot him in the chest for no apparent reason, ran across to Parliament Hill, started a gunfight, inside of Parliament Hill with the guards. The boss of security, Sergeant at Arms, I think they called him. I should know this. Shot him dead. And right now, as I'm filming this, they're searching for another gunman that they think might be hiding in the crowds at a nearby mall. Go figure, they're using civilians as shields. A few days ago, there was also another attack on another military person uh, with a car. A radicalized militant, we'll call them, from the enemy. Got into a car that day and decided to run over decorated military soldier in Quebec. Killed him. The guy who ran the officer over was uh, on the terrorist watch list. They're trying to identify the gunman at Parliament Hill right now and identify the shooter who shot the soldier. All of this happened days after our fighter jets took off from our Air Force bases to go fight out east. Anyways. Oh, what a crazy day. We're here in Regina, Saskatchewan now our way west away from all the gunfire and whatnot in Ottawa today ah oh, man what a crazy situation out there this has turned out to be a very big deal you know at first you heard the news or at least I did I was like no no this is just some crazy little whatever some kid with a gun went up there and caused some trouble no this was a planned organized attack the soldier just passed away from his wounds shot there was a soldier that got run over in Quebec the other day they're targeting soldiers and military personnel and they're still searching for a gunman who uh, a 
attacked the, the Capitol buildings. One gunman's dead. We sent him to meet his maker. His maker's not going to be very pleased with him, I'm going to tell you that much. What a big surprise he's going to get. You know, you got to wonder, what was he thinking when he woke up this morning? What was he thinking? Was he actually planning this? Like, I'm gonna go and commit suicide by police today. Like, does he wake up? Like, what do you think's gonna happen? You shoot a soldier, and then you come into the Capitol buildings, guns blazing. I hope you didn't plan to leave there alive. Like, that's one way to commit suicide, if you, if you ask me. So yeah, thoughts and prayers are going out to Ottawa. I know it's old news for you guys already. I have no idea what's going to happen in the next week by the time you guys uh, see this video. I hope there's no more attacks. It's just... Crazy. But like I said, uh, gunfire and the trouble is happening in Ottawa, which is uh, out east at the border of Ontario and Quebec. I am in Saskatchewan when it happened, or it was in uh, Yorkton, Saskatchewan when it all happened. And now I'm headed west towards Alberta. But you never know, like if there's more attacks planned, you don't know if they're... Like I'm headed to Vancouver after this, which is another one of our big world-class cities. In 750 meters, turn left onto Highway 1 West. I mean, if this is a bigger attack than what we think, you know, Vancouver could be a target and that's where I'm headed. I hope not. I hope this was it. I hope this was just a one lone wolf attack kind of thing. But you never know. All I know is Canada got a massive wake up call this morning. Okay, last question please, sir, over behind the camera. Jesus crazy stuff going on in the capital today, man. Crazy stuff. Euh, J'ai l'information que deux personnes euh, qui ont subi euh, des blessures mineures ont euh, été de l'incident spécifique de ce matin. C'est tout. Hey, Diesel, come on down here. Come on, we need a break. Come here. Been sitting in the truck. Driving down the highway, listening to the news as everything's happening in the capital today. Just crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Figured we'd take a break, let Diesel uh, walk himself a little bit. And it, it seems like so far that it's just one gunman, but they think there might be another one. So they're taking an abundance of precautions, right? They're acting as if there is like an army invading the capital. But I don't want to take away from the situation either. It's a very serious situation having someone attack the Capitol. That's, like I've been saying, that's like someone coming into the White House with a gun. And if I remember correctly, not too long ago, there was a guy who infiltrated or got into the White House through the front door, which was unlocked, with a knife. Same thing happened in Canada now, except the guy had a gun. And they killed him. He's dead. He's gone. I'll tell you what, you come in firing at our parliament buildings, I'll tell you what. Anyways, we're here at this little, uh, turn off here. Diesel, why are you pulling so hard? It's all excited over the news. That's what I usually do. I don't know, I like listening to the news. I like keeping up with what's uh, going on in the world. And you know, sometimes when I listen to CNN, I don't take everything too seriously because you know it's CNN. But when Canadian news, when CBC News has a breaking story, and that's all they've been talking about all day, CBC doesn't cry wolf. When they say something bad's happening, something bad's happening. Anyways, we're gonna get back in the truck now, continue on. See what happens next. Uh, there's a nice view for you in western Saskatchewan. I'm pretty sure we're getting close to Swift Current. We've been driving through nowhere for quite a while already, so we got to be getting closer to somewhere. We've been going through a lot of nowhere. So what you can see from up here, a nice little spot on the hill. Why I keep saying why I love Canada? There's nothing here. Wilderness. There are a couple farms over here. Now that we're in western Saskatchewan, it's more beef farms, you know, lots of cows and diesel around here. 
the eastern part of the province is more like Manitoba, more, you know, like agriculture and stuff. I heard once that the average agricultural farm in Saskatchewan is 30,000 acres. I mean, they're big mother farms out here. The big ones. Massive amounts of farms or land dedicated to farms. But like I said, out in this part, it's more about cattle. But what do I know? I'm from Manitoba. I live in the bush. I don't have any cows or any farms. So really, don't take everything I say too seriously, guys. Uh, <laughs> I've been known to be wrong. I know I always talk like I know everything. I don't know everything. Sometimes I say things and post them to the internet, and I'm totally wrong. Like when I said Portland was the capital of Maine. I always thought Portland was cat. No, apparently it's, what, what is it, Augusta, Maine? Where's that? I don't know. Apparently that's the capital of Maine, but I told everybody on YouTube that Portland was the capital. My bad, my apologies to the good people of Maine. I've done that before, so just because I say it doesn't mean it's fact. But I will tell you something that is fact. It's beautiful out here, and there's nothing out here. That's why I like driving through here, though. It's just relaxing, you know? Especially in summertime. Wintertime, it gets pretty bad because it gets so cold, right? And lots of winter storms here, lots of high winds, but... When there's no snow, oh, it's relaxing driving through here. Why don't we speed it up a little bit here? Let's show you a little bit more of nothing here. You want to see more of nothing? All right. Swift Current. Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Speedy Creek. The river which runs fast. Swift Current, Saskatchewan. That's where we are. So this is the last bigger town or city before the Alberta border. The next bigger city is Medicine Hat, and that is in Alberta. And a few little ones in between, but not much. So we stopped here for a clubhouse sandwich at the Husky. We are at the Husky. You know it's a Husky because... Where is it? Where is it? Ah, oh, that sun is so bright. There it is. Do I got it in the camera? I can't tell. There it is. Every Husky's got a big giant Canada flag. So, we're going to continue down the road. Today's pretty much just a day of driving. We're going just over a thousand kilometers today and we've gone halfway, almost. So this is almost our halfway break lunch break so from now we're pretty much just gonna hammer down and try to get there and then we're unloading their first thing in the morning so hopefully we'll get a bit of an evening there yet that would be kind of nice diesel what do you think of this day so far what do you think of this day man good boy no comment good boy anyways lunch was great it was delicious they didn't cut my clubhouse sandwich up right though they didn't do it right they're supposed to cut it into four equal pieces, right? They only cut it in half. There was two big pieces. I don't know, strange. I don't think it was exactly the same turkey clubhouse that I usually get, though. It just didn't taste the same. Maybe they thought I said something different. I don't know. I don't really care. It was still good. It looked delicious. But anyways, we're going to continue down the road. We can't sit here for too long because then we just don't get anywhere. That's just how it goes. You need to keep getting places. Not making any money unless my wheels are turning. So let's get back out there.
This is the map of Alberta. I know it's hard to see. This is the border of Saskatchewan. So Manitoba is like way that way. We are, where are we? Nanton, right there. There's Calgary. Up there, there's Edmonton. And up there is just oil. And then this is British Columbia that way, the Rocky Mountains. See the Rocky Mountains start just on the other side of Calgary there. And British Columbia. And that's a wrap. It's been a crazy day, hasn't it? What a crazy day. People shooting people. Our parliament building. Shootings at the Parliament building. Diesel, where'd you go? Well, there you are, man. Hey, yeah, you comfortable in there? Okay. Cool. Strange dog. Man, shootings at the Parliament building. Man, in Canada, you know stuff's getting real. And stuff like that's happening. So thoughts and prayers are with the families. I know that this video is up a week later. Old news already, I know. I talked about it all day. So hopefully nothing has happened in between when I filmed this and when this is posted a week later. Hopefully this is the last thing that's gonna happen, but it made worldwide news all over the place. Like, if you guys didn't hear about it, uh, what I'm talking about is uh, Parliament Building is sort of like Canada's White House. It's where the leaders and lawmakers are. <laughs> And it happened to be the busiest day of the week when they were all there. Everybody was there. And this guy drives up to our war monument. It's a monument uh, remembering the soldiers. Oh, what is the forgotten? The forgotten ones? Sort of like prisoners of war missing in action, I think. Anyways, it's a war memorial anyways. And there's some unarmed guards there, ceremonial guards who are guarding it, right? And uh, they have guns on them, but they're not loaded. Why? I don't know. If I would have known this, I would have been protesting that. I'm like, dude, man, give them some bullets in that gun, man. But maybe now they'll have loaded weapons. I don't know. But anyways, they were sitting there, and their weapons weren't loaded. And tragically, uh, the gunman gets out of a car, has a face mask, or his face covering his face, like, you know, like the, the fighters overseas always do. And... Uh, Walk up to him, point blank, boom, 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 shoots him four times. I think it was four times, multiple times anyways. Soldier died of his injuries, uh, tragically. And uh, from there, the gunmen ran, what is it, like 300 yards or whatever, across to the parliament building and walks in the door and starts shooting. As far as I know, he got one guard in the leg and he um, got one guard's pant leg, but not actually his flesh. So the guy was obviously a terrible shot, but at the same time, he did kill the one soldier, so maybe after that he was a little nervous actually walking in there and he realized how many guards there actually are inside the government building. Like, what are you thinking? It was obviously a suicide mission because you know the guy's not like, he probably didn't have dinner in the oven. You know what I mean? He's probably not expecting to be home for supper. He probably knew when he left this morning or whenever that he was not coming home. He was uh, a radical is what we call them out here. But you know, he was upset uh, at something. We don't exactly know what. But a radical can be anyone who uses radical means for their own purpose, right? It doesn't have to be religious purposes. He's radical because he walked into a government building with a gun and started firing. Who does that? Why? And. You guys gotta understand, this is Canada. Like, I know CNN's all over this and it's an American news company. And they're like, how did he gain access to the parliament building? And I mean, we're us here in Canada, we're like, what? Same way everyone else does, the front door. <laughs> how else do you get in the building? You go in the front door. <laughs> this is Canada. <laughs> this stuff doesn't happen here. Apparently now it does. Apparently we're big enough of a player right now that now we're... And I'm not trying to make this into a joke or make make light of it or anything. It's a terrible situation. And uh, 
yeah, that's what happened today. I've been listening to the news non-stop all day, all day, so I've just been pumped full of this information. I was listening to the Canadian news, because the American news on CNN, they were trying to play it up a little bit. You know, they added the fancy, intense music and breaking news, breaking news from Canada. Man, it's like a Hollywood movie. Wow, what happened in Canada? And you listen to CB CBC News, and they actually report on the facts and just, you know, give you the information, and then they're done. And then they stop reporting on it, right? Because if you keep reporting on it, uh, over and over and over, like CNN is still reporting on it. Like, all day they've been reporting on it. And I believe, personally, if you keep doing that, that's exactly what they want. They want all this free media attention, right? And like, free publicity. So I sort of like the way Canada handled it, and they just said, no free publicity. We're going to report the facts. We're going to let everybody know what happened, and then we're not going to talk about it again. We're going to let these families grieve. We're going to let the police do their job. We're going to clean this up. We're going to walk on like this never happened. We will not be intimidated. We're going to continue on with our everyday life and not give them any more attention. So this video will be the last attention that they will get from me as well. How about you, Diesel? You're not gonna talk about it anymore, are you? No, man, they're not worth it, man. They're not worth it. Keep talking about them, it's just what they want, man. I just want to sleep, man. That's all I want. They want attention, I just want to sleep. Well, I think sleeping is a good option to choose. So guys, thanks for joining me for this crazy chaotic day up here in Canada. Uh, we are in Nanton, Alberta. This is where we'll be sleeping and waking up tomorrow morning. From here, we're going to unload here, then Calgary, and then we're headed off to the Rocky Mountains. Because every time, every time we go somewhere cool, we got to be Jamaican. Because Jamaicans are cool, man. We'll see you tomorrow at 4 a.m. Central Time.